Yeah, good morning. It's Jim from jagfx.com. It is Tuesday, the 5th of March, 2019. It's just an update video where I go over what I've done on the daily charts or where I'm at on the daily charts with regards to both the high probability and the mod MACD methods. So there was a little bit of action this morning, hence today's video. And we'll also have a look at some op current open trades and some of the news that's on this week's fairly busy week in the news. So we'll start with the Mod MACD charts first. A couple of these going well, and one's not going well at all. So this is the pound yen uh, in a buy from down here at the intersection of these blue lines. Uh, you can read my notes, just pause the video. Normally they go in a chronological order from the top down. This morning, 5th of March, I've closed 0 0.05 of my remaining 0 0.1 lot, and I've set a stop at 143.535. So the stop's above the entry level, below the 25 SMA and below the 240 LMA. This, the pound pair seems to be just sort of turning over a bit at the moment. You can see that you might be a little bit hard to see, but that red dotted line there has crossed the blue. And you can see momentum's losing on the standard MACD down here. So just protecting some profit, taking some more profit, putting a stop in place. That's the pound yen. Um, I'll just quickly go through these. And a USD CAD and a buy looking for a loss recovery at this black dash level. So that's going all right at the moment. Oz CAD. Um, took a sell back here, recovered my previous loss, no dramas there, but it's going against me and probably tomorrow this might pop up and go to the upside. Euro New Zealand, took a bike a few days ago, um, not going very well at all. <laughs> Hasn't got far to get up to the loss recovery level, but it's going the wrong way at the moment, but yeah, that could pop up, there's no dramas, nothing yet too concerned about yet. CAD Swiss took a sell a couple of days back. Friday by looks going down nicely, not setting the world on fire, but it's all right. Pound Aussie in a buy back here, similar to pound yen. Uh, we've got rolling over here, losing momentum down here. So I'd already recovered my previous loss, which you can see the notes up here. And today I've closed another 0 0.05 of that remaining 0 0.1 lot in play and set a stop at 181.653, which is just below this low here, below the entry level, but it's no big deal. I'll probably push it up a bit in the next couple of days. That's the pound Aussie. Now to my painful pair, the New Zealand CAD. Took another big loss on this. You can have a look. I'm reverse from a sell this morning to a buy. Huge loss. The Point, the pips are starting to rack up. That's a lot of pips. It's causing me grief. I've kept the position size at the same. My loss recovery is a fair way away. It's all the way up there. I don't expect to get to that. If I do, it's a bonus. But what I'm looking for now is just to make some profit on this. So if I can make some profit, it eats into this loss and keep on playing. I'm taking every trade on these setups just to show you guys the actual setups. Um, probably have a look at this and not take the high risk ones where you're trading back into the 240 LMA. I'm taking them all because I've got this loss recovery thing going, which is high risk again. Um, so you could just pick off these small trends to the upside if you wished. Um, but that that's pretty ugly in there. That's a sideways market. And you look back in history, it had some decent moves. I'll just go back a bit and have a look. And it's a pair that, even though it can be a bit of a sideways pair, it can get, get motivated and can get in some decent big moves. But every now and then it'll go in that sideways action, and that's what we're in at the moment. So it's just grin and bear it. I'll take the hits. <laughs> Hopefully I can recover some of these losses. But a couple of the other pairs are going all right, so it's sort of helping a bit offset that. So that's the Mod MACD, that's the seven pairs I'm trading there. We'll have a quick look at the news, see if I've got it up here. Yes, I have. This is a Forex factory, filtered to suit me. 
It's Tuesday. Next news is in about 15 minutes, which is Aussie current account stuff. Um, the big one today is probably the Aussie cash rate. You've got the RBA statement, Royal Bank of Australia statement there. It's interest rates, so they're not expecting a change. That's today. I'm never sure why this is never high impact. I know the statement is, but I'm not sure why that cash rate, you think it'd be a red one, but not to be. So we've got Carney, the Bank of England governor, speaking later tonight. Um, another Aussie dude tomorrow speaking, Royal Bank of um, our our governor of our Royal Bank of Australia, that's low. Uh, GDP out of Australia tomorrow. Then we've got trade balance out of Canada tomorrow. Then we've got Canadian interest rate news tomorrow also. And they're not expecting a change either, so just be careful of that. That uh, A few talking heads in the chat. Retail sales out of Aussie. We're on Thursday now. This is all local. This is all in my local Vietnam time. And Euro, in, out of Europe, their main refinancing rate. That's their interest rates. You can see, if you just click on this, it'll tell you what it is. Interest rate on the main refinancing operations provide the bulk of liquidity to the banking system. So you can read that there. Not expecting a change. And then they have the press conference shortly thereafter, so just be careful of that. More talking heads, then Friday's a big one. It used to be called non-farm payroll day. Um, usually Canada and the United States both post their employment numbers. So we've got the Canadian ones, then we have the US ones. So this could be a market market mover. Even Fed Chairman Powell has a bit of a chat on Saturday morning, but so uh, just be careful. It's a pretty busy week news-wise. All right, let's switch over to the high probability. Now, I took some new trades this morning, and I'll discuss them in a minute. So we'll go through what we've got open. Um, CAD Swiss, we're in a cell. I've already closed. Uh, I think I was, yeah, I was in two trades here. Took a cell on this red dot here. Didn't work out. Drew this trend line. Took a second cell on the Breach of the trend line, which is a slightly bigger position size. I closed out my original cell, took a small loss, I think, on that, then closed out a partial on the second cell on the trend line break, and now stops in place below the entry level. And we've got, you can see that the MACD is below the zero level, and we've also got bullish JagFX RD. So just protecting that position, but it's going all right. Uh, USD Japan, and I think that's going too well. I'm going to sell back here. Um, it didn't go anywhere. <laughs> then I got a buy signal here, so I took the hedge buy. You can read my notes, just pause the video. So basically, it took a sell at 0 0.1, and it went against me. So I've taken a, taken a hedge buy to lock in that loss. So. You can see the prices, the difference in price there. Can't lose any more, so it's because normally most of my trades are into with a stop, so I have to have some protection if it goes against me. The MACD is still heading down, possibly setting up for regular bearish divergence. Already had that was hidden divergence there, looking for regular bearish divergence now. And what I'm looking for is another sell signal. So if I get an, another sell signal, it'll, I'll go in with zero. 0 0.30, then look to work my way out of that. So that's the USD Japanese yen. That style of trading is high risk. You could have just taken that first sell trade. I'll go back to it. You could have just taken that first sell trade and had a stop above the high there, and you would have been stopped out. Then you wouldn't have to worry about that buy trade, the hedge, and just wait for the next sell signal. So the way I'm trading, High risk. I like doing the loss recovery stuff. It's, I'm comfortable doing it. I've been doing it for years, so it's all good. All right, Euro Pound. This is a new trade I took this morning. It's a buy. It's a high risk. You can read my notes. The MAs, look at them. They're heading down and they're spreading. We've got good regular bullish divergence. There's a low there. There's a lower low there. Look at the MACD Platinum. 
a low there, the same one there, and a higher low there. So it's regular bullish divergence. Regular divergence normally means a possible trend reversal. Not always, but that's what it tends to. So it's a higher risk trade and ideally looking to trade up into the MAs. So it's not a bad looking setup at the moment. So that's a new buy this morning on the Euro pound. Now, we'll do the other pound pairs because they're is they're very similar. This is the pound Swiss, also a new sell trade this morning, a new trade this morning, sell. Very similar to pound except, uh, the euro pound except the opposite, it's a sell. Same deal. MAs, they're starting to spread and head up. So I wouldn't say we're trading against the trend as yet, but there's certainly, you have a look from back um, Christmas this thing's been heading up, so it's in an uptrend. So it's a high risk trade. We're turning down. We're trading down towards the MAs. That's the plan. We've got regular bearish divergence. So we've got a nice high and high high in price, but a lower high on the MACD platinum. So looking to trade back down. That's the pound Swiss, and you'll also notice on the pound USD, same deal this morning. Very similar to the pound Swiss. I took a new sell. MA is tight, regular bearish divergence, similar, very similar setup. Um, I made note on my Facebook update. Be careful. If you want to take, I'm taking all three of these because I just like showing you guys all the trade setups and that. But these are all three highly correlated pairs, so your risk is basically multiplied by three. Generally, they will move in the same direction if there is Great British Pound news. Obviously, if there's USD news, it might only affect one pair. But if there's pound news and with Brexit being still a bit dodgy, you never know what happens with a pound. So you, you are taking a bigger risk by trading all three. But I'm showing setups, so it's all good for me. Now, what else we got here? Um, went through the yen, USD, Swiss franc. Let's have a look at that. I'm going to sell back here. Price has gone down. You can read my notes. Like on the 22nd of Feb, I closed half my position and set a stop, and I moved my stop down on the 1st of March. So stops now below the entry level here. We've got a blue dot here on the MACD Platinum. We've got a bullish JagFX RD. So looking to sort of head back up into that. Um, up into that area, so that can't lose on this trade. I, it's a sideways market. Look at those candles. That's just that's over two weeks nearly. That's just crap. But you know that's the way it is. That's a Swiss franc. Can't lose, which is a good thing, I guess. But we're not exactly setting the world on fire. New Zealand Japanese yen in a sell back here. It's going against me. I've drawn this little trend line up here, looking for a break of this trend line. It's threatening, but it doesn't seem to want to go down. Again, if it's like the, it might be like the USD Japanese yen where I get a buy signal, where I could take a hedge trade, give myself some protection and look for another sell. But at the moment, we're still in, technically we're still in sell mode because the last dot was a red QMP filtered dot. And the MACD is heading down, but price is going, I guess you can say sideways, but it's grinding up slowly. It's not the end of the world. Quite happy to trade myself out of these these pairs like that, it's not that big a mover. And finally, we'll have a look at um, gold. I'm gonna sell trade back here. I like this trade. <laughs> it's a bit, bit of a high risk trade initially because the, um, I think I took two trades. I was in a sell here. Um, it went against me. I took the hedge. So that was a buy hedge there. And then I took a second sell at a bigger position. Um, and it's gone down nicely where I managed to recover. I closed the original sell, the hedge buy, and two thirds of that second. Now we've got a stop in place above here and it's just dropped like a rock since then, which is good. So looking all right on the gold. 
while I'm here, I might as well slip over and try and kill a few of these um, four-hour. I've been calling some four-hour setups in the Facebook group, even though I'm not keeping them um, on a spreadsheet or anything like that. Um, so I might just try and kill a few of them while we're here and just show you because I've show you what, what would have happened. So, uh, these are ones I'll make notes in the Facebook group, but Pound Swiss, you can see the four hour cell set up, went down nicely. This thing actually went pretty well. Uh, by now you should be out. There was a green QMP dot here, QMP filter dot here. Uh, it might have been a point of taking half off the table and moving a stop to above your, just above your entry level there or something like that because we've still got the bearish JagFX RD. Thing is, we got close to the um, MA, so that would have been enough for me to sort of think, yeah, that's enough. But it's headed down nicely. If you'd kept in, that's, you'd, I'd be definitely moving stops now and tightening up. So that's the pound Swiss, no problems there. Call a buy here on the, you probably, I've changed my monitors, that's why my notes are all missing. It's the Euro pound, call a buy there. As soon as you see this JagFX, bearish JagFX RD and getting close to the MAs, you would have started closing out half, putting a stop somewhere so you can protect your position, but that's where they went all right. So you got a, would have got a few pips there, not, not, not enough to buy a Lambo, but not bad. Uh, what we do here, start off with a sell. It again, it come down to the. Uh, this is a pound USD. It came down to this. Got bullish JagFX RD. It was a high risk trade that you know the MACDs through the zero level. So you would have been out that sell. You, know, you might have picked up you know, 50 pips or something. It doesn't look like much, but <laughs> it's still 50 pips there. Then I called a buy. I think I call a buy. Yeah, I did. There it is, right, written right there. Uh, that has gone not so good. So I'll keep an eye on this, and we'll work our way out of this. I'm thinking. Uh, you start looking at drawing trend lines. Yeah, yeah we'll work out of that. No worries at all. <laughs> Super confident. <laughs> Always. Nah, it's that's doable. So we'll just wait and see. Hopefully we get a sell. We can take a, a hedge or something like that and we'll try and work out. After I just took the <laughs> a sell on the daily. Uh, Euro New Zealand, four hour sell. Took a sell. This is the sell signal here. Again, we've got the bullish JagFX RD. You'd be looking at, once you see one of them, you'd be looking at closing out half your trade setting a stop somewhere, just protect your position. And you can still ride it down further. MACD's just gone through the zero level there. So that, that's, at the moment, you know, that's, again, that's 50 plus pips, you know. So it's not too bad. Doesn't look like much, but, you know, what do we do here? It's the Pound Aussie, call a sell trade on that. This is the four hour chart still. Again, similar to the other Pound pairs, as soon as you get that Bullish JagFX RD and it's MACD's already through the zero level, start tightening things up. So, you know, you're at the moment you're at plus 70 pips or something. So it's not too bad, you're not you're not losing. Aussie Swiss called a buy, it's going sideways. That'd be one that I'd be looking for a possible trend line again. Where's my trend line? Trend line, there's no exact science when it comes to trend lines. Don't believe everything you read or hear about them. Just draw them somewhere obvious and possibly look for another break there to take a second buy trade or something like that. It may roll over, you get a sell, hedge, then take another buy. It's a slow moving pair, so it's not going to stress me out too much. Euro Aussie, call the sell on this back key, went against me initially, held this. Didn't really clear this high, this double top I marked here, uh, and it's come down nicely. Now, it's all getting a bit ugly. The MACD is getting near the zero level, but we're still in a, technically still in a sell. 
you've still got bearish Jag FX RD, get down there, these MAs might be worth taking some action. New Zealand Swiss took a buy, going sideways. Just waiting on that one. Pound New Zealand. Uh, this is a sell we're looking at. Pretty much similar to all the other pound pairs. Remember, this is a four hour chart, so. Um, took the sell there, went down, meandered, gave a buy signal. Now, you'd probably take the hedge there and take the next sell there, and then you get bullish JFXRD. I guarantee you that would have been, you could get out of that profitable, no worries at all, because that sells on the red line, and the buy would have been on the, on the open of that with that candle is and you would have easily got new trade for three times there down there no worries at all as soon as you got that bullish jagfx rd close that cell close that hedge buy close two-thirds of that second cell put a stop in place somewhere to protect it and see if you can milk some more pips out of it that's all right um, swiss franc japanese yen High risk trade, sell, no divergence. Up to you whether you take those sort of trades or not. It is, it is a high risk trade. There's just no divergence at all. The reason I sort of like these is it's super overextended, a long way above the MAs. Generally, the MAs don't get that far away from price. So you'd think it'd come down. It may take a while, but that's the plan. Euro, yen, very similar. Um, can't even see my notes here. Must be somewhere I don't think I took I said I, I just mentioned this trade I didn't take it that's why there's no notes there I just mentioned it similar to the um, Swiss franc Japanese yen probably would have already got some pips out of that one though OzCAD that's a two hour chart I was looking at ah here we go here's another one USD Japanese yen notes are all change monitors ah uh, High risk against the trend and no confirming divergence, I'd say, I imagine. Yep. So there's no divergence. We're against the trend. Again, we're a long way above the MA. So I think we're, I'm pretty confident. Look, the, the MACD Platinum's rolled over nicely. Pretty confident we can drive that down into the. Oh, that crack that was my elbow into the MAs that's the plan in a way and pound CAD was a sell I called this morning uh, so it has got divergence the bearish divergence we've gone it's gone the wrong way at the moment but it's no big deal it's only early days again drive it down into those MAs so that's the four hour charts all the ones I've been calling in the Facebook group so other than that guys that's about it for now it's probably rambled on a bit too long on this video, so thanks for watching. If you do like these videos, please subscribe or at least hit the like button. They're not the most professional ones done, but you get the message and that's what counts. I'm not going to spend hours on editing or anything like that. Um, and welcome to all the new members, and that's both the Facebook group and the YouTube channel. It is appreciated. Enjoy your day. It's Tuesday, 5th of March. Cheers.